to invite the general manager, Mr. Abbas Sonshi, to give this lecture. Thank you. Hello. So the title is, I call it Get Closer to the Ocean, uh, because we want to use technologies, uh, especially USVs, to uh, let people to get closer to the, to the ocean. So what is USV? Maybe you are curious about, you never, maybe you never heard about USV, because at this, uh, at this moment you may know UAV, you know the drones flying everywhere, a lot of companies doing UA, yeah, UAVs, but uh, uh, in fact it's not too much, too many companies in the world doing the USVs, so I'm give a brief introduction of the USV. Sorry, so, so, USV called unmanned service vessel. Uh, it's a type of service robot. So we call it robotics, not, a, not only a ship, but as robotics, it is on the service. And so it can, uh, with advanced sensing, uh, navigation, and as well as the control and the communication systems. Also with a uh, lot of uh, different kind of so payloads. So it can autonomously navigate and perform tasks, uh, especially for the dangerous, tedious tasks, yeah, which is not suitable for the people to do. Uh, so this is USB. So normally the USB has the intelligent uh, perception. It can uh, do some target identification. Also the uh, situational fusion. Which he also, it also can do navigation planning and uh, make the decision. Uh, also navigation control also cooperative control uh, I mean between the USVs as well as USVs, ULVs and AOVs maybe. So, sorry. Yeah, so why we use USV? USV comparing to, uh, man, uh, both comparing to uh, man, both it has some advantages such as uh, higher economic efficiency because you have you do not need the uh, facilities on the boat for the for the for the humans uh, sometimes the if the the boat stay a long time on the sea it will need a lot of facilities to 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 maintain the people who live on the boat so if it's, if this is usv it will need less um, uh, fuel consumption as well as the facilities. So it's a no, no, no person, so it's, it's a uh, low operation risk, so you can operate under some unforecastable or bad weather conditions or sea conditions. Yeah. So it has a wider uh, data coverage uh, because uh, for some man, man boat is always very big. Uh, it's some, for some shallow waters, it's not feasible for them to do some certain works such as survey works. So our USV can be used to some such kind of works. It also has less carbon footprint because nowadays we're talking about uh, ESG, we're talking about the carbon emissioning, uh, less carbon emissioning, so it has a less, ca less carbon footprint. Also, it can increase the working efficiency because um, we will introduce later because you can do some swap control. Uh, you, you, you not only use one USV, you can use a, a pair or use a five, ten, a group of USVs to work together for the certain tasks. So it will more efficient for the works. So what? When we invite the uh, USV, we do a lot of applications of USVs in different fields. For example, in 2010, the first uh, USV we made was doing the uh, environmental monitoring. Uh, it was worked for the water sampling and water, collection, water sample collection and do the sampling works. And after that, we invented the USV, which can be used for the hydrographic uh, survey. And later on, it was used to be underwater mapping, uh, as well as uh, petrol surveillance. Uh, in 2017, we use it. Uh, we create the unmanned cargo, which is uh, unmanned USV. Uh, also doing the gravity magnetic, magnetic survey, for example. Uh, in 2018, uh, we also 
uh, created some USVs which can do in the uh, geometrical during variation survey, collaborative USV survey. So it's, it's, the function is uh, increased year by year. So USV is a platform. So we use this platform uh, with different payloads. We can achieve different uh, kinds of uh, works. So uh, this is also, the function is also increased. So you can use USV based on USV to uh, carry out particular tasks. Nowadays, uh, many we are talking about the offshore uh, wind farm doing some survey works. Also, for the oil and gas industry, we can do some transportation works using USV. So, uh, I will have some videos uh, later for your understanding. So, how to cal classify the USV? Uh, I think, uh, on our understanding, is, uh, in our product portfolio, there's about three types. Uh, at the beginning stage, we're doing the in the water vessel that's uh, normally used in the lake or in the reservoir, or uh, I mean, it's on near shore. It's very relatively small USVs, and then we use the USV as the marine survey. It's for the um, I mean, for the near shore uh, uh, works, but it, it is not on the lake. It's on the uh, on the ocean already, and also we're doing the marine time security vessel. Uh, different types of uh, application fields, maybe need different kinds of USVs. So for in the waterway vessels, it's uh, relatively small. Uh, and the endurance is not so long. The size is not so big. The uh, the, I mean, the communication distance is not so far. And also the payloads may be not so uh, comprehensive. Uh, this is our uh, uh, product at the beginning stage. So the technical barrier is not so high. And uh, nowadays in China, also as well as in the worldwide, there are some companies still doing such kind of USVs. And the second is marine survey vessels. Uh, it's a middle to large size. I mean, the, the middle or large size comparing to traditional boat is uh, still small. Uh, but in the US industry, it's relatively middle or uh, large size. Normally it's between about uh, 5 meters to about 20 meters. So such kind of USV is need a uh, higher endurance because you have to work uh, offshore. Uh, you have to uh, have a long endurance, uh, have a good communication system, have a, a higher autonomous level. So, yeah, so it can uh, automatically doing some works. Another is the marine tire security vessel. For such kind of vessel, it needs high speed uh, because you have to do some uh, quick response, such as the tracking, such as the surveillance, patrol, escort. So you need high speed, you need uh, good communication. You also have a good uh, autonomous level to suit the real applications. Uh, from the inland water vessels to the marine uh, security vessels, uh, I think the size is going uh, bigger and bigger. So the displacement is bigger, is bigger and bigger. Uh, so, uh, but in future, in fact, the sea cargo uh, it, that is a very very huge market. If all the cargo ships around the world can be USV can be unmanned, I think that will be a big market. So less size will be much much bigger. Yeah, so this is the classification. And also, just uh, USV, as I mentioned, is just a platform. Uh, and uh, uh, you have to install different kind of uh, uh, payloads, uh, especially for the marine, for the survey, you have survey equipment to uh, achieve different kinds of, uh, yes, nice. Yeah, it's not convenient sense. Hello. Hi. Yeah. Um, different payloads can achieve different uh, functions. So on for our USVs, I think uh, we can equip with the main manufacturers of the uh, survey companies around the world. So for example, Kongsberger, uh, the uh, 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 Teledyne. So yeah, we can equip with the main uh, like, survey equipment around the world. Uh, so, so for example, ROV, we also can do that. So talking about USV, after that, I'm talking about Ocean Alpha, which company we are. Um, 
you know, uh, nowadays in China, we create an area we call the Greater Bay Area. Uh, it has combines of seven cities in the Guangdong province, and also Hong Kong and Macau. The total nine cities uh, as the Greater Bay Area. So at this area, in the past about 10 years, uh, it creates a lot of uh, robotics companies, such as DJI. You know, DJI is the drone leader in the world. So DJI is the the founder of DJI, also our our, our no customer, our alumni, we are graduate from the same school. It's from the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. Actually, it's very um, it's a good university which is very focused on the creative of the robotics. So nowadays in that area, you have uh, we have UAV, we have USV, we also have some. Uh, uh, Automatic vehicles on the road, on the uh, uh, yeah, on the road, and also we have some robotics such as delivery the food in the restaurant. So a lot of robotics companies in this region. So this is the uh, sorry, this is the founder uh, total four in the at the beginning we created the company in uh, Zhuhai, which is very close to Hong Kong. So Ocean Alpha is the international brand, but the headquarters is now is in Zhuhai. And uh, after it was established in uh, since, 19, uh, uh, since 2010, so it's about 14 years we focused on in this industry. At this moment, it's over 500 staffs, and among them is uh, over 200 is R&D persons. So we got uh, the funding about four times, about over one billion, uh, one billion uh, uh, RMB. So by the way, spent all the money is in R&D. So we. We, we actually we spend all the money in this industry, so uh, we so we got for over 450 patents of the USV. It uh, almost occupied about one fifth of the uh, patents of in this industry or around the world. Um, so we totally delivered the 3,000 over 3,000 UFC products, uh, but it includes the small ones such as the rescue boat. I will uh, I will I will introduce to you guys. So we selling the products to over 50 uh, countries and regions, and it has uh, over 600 uh, customers worldwide. This is our setup. Now uh, we have uh, headquarters in Zhuhai, but the Hong Kong branch is in uh, Hong Kong branch is responsible for the international brand. So we have uh, and this center in Singapore, which is mainly responsible for the uh, uh, unmanned firefighting boats and also the uh, sec security boats. Uh, we have factories in Yancheng, it's the Jiangsu province, which is very close to Shanghai. And uh, we have R&D center in Xi'an, which is focused on the radar. Uh, we have offices in Beijing. So at this time when we uh, went to Qatar, I think it's a, a good chance for us to, uh, to, to, to be here or yeah, set our office here and, and do some R&D works and work together with you guys. So yeah, that's a good chance. Um, this is a product low map from the, uh, I mean, from the inland water levels products to the marine survey level products, and further for, for the marine petrol uh, uh, products is from the 2013 to 2022. As uh, the size is bigger and bigger, and the application field is from the water and gradually to the near shore and then offshore, and the the the, the material that I mean. I mean, the, the, the complexity of the products is, uh, is beyond the NPM, yeah. So I, I will not introduce each one, but I have I prepared some uh, videos for different applications later for us, for you guys to uh, understand more. So this is the, some uh, customers overseas, uh, including the European countries and also Middle East, Middle East countries and also the Southeast China, uh, Southeast Asia countries, yeah. Uh, so this is a short video which can kind of have a basic understanding of the company and the industry. Ocean Alpha is empowering the global development of intelligent water service devices with its USB technology. Ocean Alpha is using the Thank you. 
wireless navigation, intelligent obstacle avoidance, and storm control, and has obtained nearly 400 U.S. related patents, reaching the world leading level. In 2016, Ocean Alpha applied its unmanned boats to navigate fully autonomously and conduct cooperative tasks under weak connectivity conditions in open water. It was only 19 months later than the world's first application by the U.S. In 2018, the company achieved the formation sailing control of 81 unmanned vessels and completed a self-adaptive swarm drill of 56 unmanned boats, which broke the world record for the scale of USB swarm control. From environment protection to ocean exploration, Ocean Alpha has pioneered the application of USBs to various scenarios. from dangerous, complicated, and inefficient operations on the water. In the field of environmental monitoring, Ocean Alpha has participated in significant tasks for natural resource surveys and environmental emergency response, such as water pollution investigation for the Yangtze River and deposition detection for the Yellow River. Its USBs have achieved a service mileage of more than 100,000 kilometers and have gained recognition from China's national ministries and commissions. For marine surveying, Ocean Alpha has served massive major scientific research institutions, universities, and enterprises, assisting Antarctic scientific research, marine stereoscopic observation, and offshore energy platforms operation and maintenance. To engage with industries to spur the blue economy, for public security, Ocean Alpha USB products have been sent to the front line to assist relief efforts in flooding affected areas worldwide. The company's unmanned vessels have also been used for round-the-clock maritime patrolling, anti-smuggling, and anti-stolen, building a smart coastal defense for the regions and protecting the people. This is the headquarters in Zhuhai. From a global perspective, Ocean Alpha has set up branches in Beijing, Xi'an, Shenzhen, Singapore, and Nietzsche. The company has delivered comprehensive and reliable USB solutions to professionals in more than 50 countries around the world. Uh, that's a very quick uh, video to introduce the company and the product. So I'm um, further to discuss something about the uh, key technologies. Um, I think uh, after accumulation for 14 years, we uh, accumulate all of uh, technology in the industry. Uh, as you know, I think the, we are not only doing the software, uh, we uh, deliver the overall design because we, uh, at the end, we are deliver a, a, total, a, a total assembly, the, uh, I mean USV, that is uh, overall design, that's only the uh, uh, software. So we have the overall platform design capacity. And also we have intelligent autonomous control, uh, which is the key, I mean, if you, uh, if you treat the, the USV as a human, then the most important one is the brain. So you have to be intelligent, you have to be autonomous, you have to do some control works. Um, and then we uh, master the uh, sword control technologies, which is, has the achieved the maximum uh, control of the USVs in the world. So uh, in future, I think there's no uh, single work, I mean, I mean, robotic, robotics is not is not to doing single works. It can form a team, form a group to do different kinds of works, no matter the on the, on the service, but also on the air and a little of water. Yeah, so it's a comprehensive uh, soil come to. And also the auto collision avoidance. Uh, you have to be smart. You have to be how to avoid the obstacles. Uh, so yes, uh, you have to establish the auto collision avoidance technology. 
So we also have the control hardware and the, um, it means you can do some remote control box. I think uh, you can, instead you control on the board, so you can uh, control in the remote control rooms, such as maybe here, and you can remote control about southern kilometers outside, you can do the control box. So we also do the hard wheels. And the communic communication enhancement, as you know, the uh, communication on the CE is very, very not, not, not so good, it's very difficult. So normally we have three communication uh, systems, such as one is private, second is to use the communication, uh, public communication network, another is using the a satellite, satellite control. Uh, nowadays, you also can use the stunning uh, as well. So stunning is a good, uh, I think, uh, communication method, especially in the UK and U Ukraine and the Russia uh, war. I think uh, Ukraine used a lot of USVs, which is under the control by stunning, so to attack uh, Russia. So it's very critical for the control of USV. So for communication enhancement, we have AI algorithms to Automatic, automatically change between the different kinds of communication methods to optimize use the communication channel to do the communication. And also we have the auto launch and recovery system because how to deploy a USV to the working conditions, how from the storage areas such as the oil and gas platform because the heat is very, or, or you from a mothership, you know the mothership or the platform is higher than the the, 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 the sea level, so how to, how to, how to operate, how to dis, 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 deploy, uh, deploy the, 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 the equipment and also how to recover it is uh, also very uh, uh, critical and so also we have such kind of uh, technologies. And another one is the, is a big project, I will introduce later some videos for you guys, it's a, we call it ISOS project, it's a big project, we collaborate with the laboratory in, uh, uh, in, in Guangdong province, uh, it's for the, uh, I mean for the science, sci scientific research on the South China Sea, it is a mother shape, very big, about 80 meters and uh, it can uh, equipped with the UAV, USV and also AUV, so uh, it's a comprehensive, uh, I mean the vertical observation system. So uh, for the autonomous capacity, you can see uh, just not different kinds of functions you have to develop, such as the uh, data fusion of satellite maps and ENC. Uh, you have to uh, put the electronic, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, the electronic mat catch up into the computer, so so he knows how to how to recognize the map. Uh, you can you you have to integrate the AIs and and the maps, and you, you also you have the function of autopilot. So when you set the <coughs> set the Loads it can be walked according to the loads you set, and you have to do nothing about after that. So you have to do the collision avoidance, as I mentioned. Also, dynamic positioning. Dynamic positioning is also very important because sometimes when you there's no 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 man on the boat to control the boat, uh, but it has to be do some functions such as the such as the firefighting. We we are developed. You have to shoot the water outside, but it's a force back, so you have to use dynamic positioning to control the USV, so they can stay on the position and not don't move. Uh, also, you have to uh, <coughs> virtual anchoring. <coughs> it's very useful actually for the fishing fishing boat. When you go outside, you want to anchor on that position and do some fishing, and don't no, no need to control the boat. So you, have, you can have the virtual. Uh, anchoring function, so it can be work very easy for you to to fishing, to fishing. As such, what is a lot of uh, I mean uh, the functions you can imagine in the for the USV because you have no man on the boat. The, the how the the, the, the crews how to operate it can be uh, replaced by the computer, so it's it's not easy. Yeah. The auto navigation. So when you set, you can yeah. Quick hand, you can run as per the per set loads, and also we have the function to auto when there's no fuel or you have some uh, uh, maybe troubles, it can uh, automatically back to the position. Yes, actually, we have experience in the South China area. We have one ship go outside but lost the communication. But uh, lucky we set the, the, the home positioning function, and after three days, it go back <laughs> automatically. Yes, very. Very uh, impressive at that time. 
So correlation avoidance system, we have a lot of sensors installed in the USVs, such as the US, you have to use the uh, AI signal, you have to use the navigation data signal, you have to use the EO camera, because the image, different image, maybe have a, you have AI function to identify which obstacles there, and also you have to uh, use LIDAR for some short distance uh, objectives. Oh, all, all such kind of information you collected and you have to do some uh, treatment to identify what's the next moment, what's the next action the boat have to, to take. Yeah, so correlation organization system. Target tracking is very, you can image if you want to track some some boats, for example, if someone you are, is illegal, you want to track him, it's very simple. You just kick on the boat and then we, the USV can keep tracking the, the, the boat and take some evidence, maybe do some uh, words with him, yeah. take some photos for records, so all the track, all the track, target tracking. And this is the soil control, which was prepared for the UAE IDEX function. Uh, it's, a, it's a represent of UAE and IDEX. function can used to be the light show. If you install some lights on site, it can display different kinds of patterns. Yeah, so it can be used as that uh, aspect. Okay, um, actually today I'm not going to, oh, no, don't want to share too much about the technologies about the USC because that's a little bit difficult, but I want to share more about the uh, scenarios of, of, of application of uh, different USVs in different fields, so can have can let you guys have uh, maybe brief uh, insights about what USV can do, yeah. So, um, this is, well, I think yes, if there's, there's uh, water, there's uh, boats, I think it can be a man, okay? Nowadays we are men, but I think all the boats can be a man. Uh, so uh, from the lakes, reservoirs, to the near shore, to the offshore, different kind of uh, scenarios, you can use different kinds of, uh, I mean, uh, USBs. So for smart water management for a city, you know, we are talking about smart city. When you're talking about smart city, you have to uh, collect information for, on a load uh, from air, but if you want the information from the water, you have to use the USV as the terminal to get such kind of information. We have USVs for the water quality monitoring and sampling. We have USVs for such as uh, surveilling and mapping, hydrographic measurement, and also waterway clearance for the rapid collection. And when we're talking about the marine engineering, we have such kind of ocean observation USVs. We have to, we, we ever go to the Antarctic to for the uh, to 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 with the national boats to be there to do the survey works. And also we have the oil and gas uh, operation and maintenance uh, USVs. Which this one is so to end firefighting. And uh, for some small small uh, USV we call or call small robotics. We have the dolphin one, dolphin three, laughing, saving robot. Instead of people get diving into the water and the swing there to rescue the person, we can use the uh, robotics to rescue, do the rescue works. Uh, also we have the rescue stretchers. If the, 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 the person has no, no, no sense, we can use stretcher with person to rescue him. And also we have intelligent life-saving system. It's uh, used uh, some camera. If in certain areas, we can install different cameras. So the cameras can, with AI function, can automatically detect the person is, is wrong. Uh, he, he's not, not swimming or this person not a stuck. So when the, the AI camera detected, so it, the, the, the equipment will automatically deploy for the rescue works. Yeah, so this is for the intelligent life saving. 
And also some ideas or projects also we are kind of carrying is the uh, logistic and the transportation, uh, for example, the uh, for the logistics. Uh, this is uh, we we done about five years ago. Yeah, but uh, actually the technical side is no problem, but uh, more or less is the regulation side uh, how to bear the logistics logistics big cargoes to use U.S. on man. Okay, it's a it's a big issue. So um, it's still at the beginning stage. Uh, as well, we can have the transport uh, vessels for transport different kinds, maybe materials, water, or we think maybe uh, between different kinds of among different kinds of uh, uh, islands, or, yeah, or ports, uh, and uh, uh, electrical ferry, intelligent electrical ferry for delivery you know, persons. Nowadays in uh, in Norway, uh, they have yes, they, are, they they already have applied some US fees on the a ferry to deliver people from one port to another port. Uh, yeah, so it's a, it's a big trend. And also fishing boat, fishing boat, <laughs> fishing boat. If you if you can use USB, you will more enjoy your fishing walks on the sea. <laughs> For example, if you want to, you found there's a there's a place very uh, very a lot of fishes. Uh, you want to come next time. For people, you can maybe you cannot remember, but uh, for a, a man boat, if uh, with the. Uh, the, the, the navigation or they have a record, right? You, so you can go to there next time according to the last track uh, lines. Yeah. So also for uh, another aspect is the intelligent world of life. Uh, we actually we do not do the uh, products on the consumer side, but uh, um, we, we normally, normally focus on the uh, industrial side for the institution, for the, for the, for the um, I mean, for the uh, different kinds of uh, uh, government. So, but now we also have some products regarding to the, uh, I mean, for the consumer side. You have also, you know, in nowadays in China, the electrical vehicle industry is very, very, um, I mean, uh, advanced because the the, the, the big uh, support, not the support, the big trend in China is uh, traditional. The traditional diesel engines have to be replaced to the electrical. Uh, so with that industry development, the cost and the quality of the, uh, such as the battery, the control system, the motor, dramatically uh, decreased. So it's a, it's a. For example, Tesla at the beginning is very expensive, but nowadays in China the, the price is very low. And also, BYD, a lot of competitive competitions there. So the the production, the, the, the supply chain, the cost is very low. So also for boats, this is the last trend. You, when you use traditional diesel engine, but now by in future it will be changed to the electrical one. So um, we would like to integrate the electrical. Uh, 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 um, I mean, electrical driven method together with our intelligent control system. So, make the boat uh, just like a car, it's uh, environmental friendly as well as it's smart. So, that's what we are going to do. So, for example, the, uh, I will introduce more maybe here uh, is a brief introduction. So yeah, you ha can have different functions on, on the on the world on the, on the water. When there's, there's no driving rooms, you you don't need to have crews. You can control by yourself. You use an iPad. You can set the loads where you want to go, and it will automatically go there. So um, you can have different functions inside, such as a meeting, restaurant, uh, eating, and uh, maybe have a hotel. Uh, also as the uh, 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 hello or etc. <laughs> so it's very, yeah, different functions as per the customer's requirement. This is no emission of, uh, no emission, no sewage, and no noise. So it's a very environmental friendly product. So as I mentioned, I will show some uh, application cases for you guys to have a brief understanding of what we are going to do. This is uh, case one is um, in, in uh, German, Germany, uh, the, uh, the Hamburg port. They use our USB to do the hydrographic survey of the ports. Yeah. So this is a video. Sorry. Hey, how to pray? So. 
celebrations in the Port of Hamburg. A warm welcome to Area 1. Does this advise us? It's something completely new and something that doesn't exist in other ports. We're at the Vanguard, and so are we. In this edition, of course, is what we do. We need Thomas Teese and his team from the HPA's Hydrographic Data Department. Hi-Tech in the Port of Hamburg. The Echo One is the first autonomous drone for water surveying. The new drone is remarkable for its modest size and high maneuverability and its being put through it. This is a very easy uh, remote control. It's a very low level autonomous. Yeah. The Echo One is an unmanned surveying with a length of 1 meter 60 and very low draft. It has lots of electronics on board and the main component is the automatic navigation capability enabling it to travel set routes. Echo One is a new Grundlage or this autonomous Fahrzeug in Macau. It's an application of the boats in the uh, port uh, for the simple uh, survey works. I think it's a small product, but it's, a, yeah, it's some uh, technology, technology inside. So this is the second case I want to share with you guys. is about the uh, transportation uh, between the, uh, and the surveillance between the oil and gas platforms. Uh, this case is, was we, we sell four USVs uh, to the CNOOC. It's a national oil and, ca oil and ga gas company in China. So they use the, the USVs to transport goods and also do the surveillance. And they like to use it. <laughs> they already uh, used it for over uh, 25,000 hours. Yeah, and also uh, the distance is, over, is about 224 kilometers, thousand kilometers. The main task is our daily patrol, goods transportation, and also all your spilling monitoring, etc. So, uh, this is their internal uh, reporting about the cost, cost uh, about the cost side. So, for the operation cost, material trans transportation, and the supply, they save about 1.75 million RMB per year for one. You know, for the oil field, for the daily patrol, they also save about five million. Uh, IMB per year, so the ROI is very good. And <laughs> when they buy the boat, they, and I mean, within one one year, you can save the cost of the of, of, of the boat. Yeah. So here's some uh, videos to show the to show the uh, functions of the boats. This is the auto uh, launching system.
instead of using uh, big ships for the transportation, uh, the USVs can provide a fr very frequent uh, transportation. And uh, the size is not so big, but the frequency is very, you can very high. For some emergency delivery, is very, I think it's very important. This is the self-recovery system. Uh, we believe this. Uh, I think this this boat is very very useful in Gulf Bay area uh, because there's a lot of oil and gas platforms here, and uh, I think more or less there was some some emergency delivery. You can use UAV, uh, but the, the the weight I think is relatively small for UAV to carry. But for USV, is I think uh, the, the weight can be higher, as well as the, for the weather conditions. Um, I think the UAV, UAV will be much more sensitive for the weather, but for USV it's better to, to bear the weather conditions, as well as the CC conditions. So that's what we have to introduce here. Yeah. Another one is the uh, marine ocean scientific research, as I mentioned, the, uh, Traditionally, you, you, you use some uh, man boats, some big boats over southern terms, and a lot of I mean, maybe over uh, 15 or 20 persons staying on a boat for one month to do the survey walks. They are, they, they are nice, <laughs> so it's very boring, it's very tough for those guys. But you, ha you, can, have, you, have, uh, you can use USVs. Uh, this is an example in the you know, greater Bay Area. We use USVs to carry out the survey works. Traditionally, boats were used half a year, half a year but we use five small USVs to replace the works. So it only used uh, uh, 61 days. It achieved about 28,000 kilometers the uh, survey walks. So here's some uh, videos to show. <laughs> Payload used for the big boat and the USV are the same. So the, the space saving is for the for the for the person's facilities on the manned boat. Yeah. The, the oil consumption is very low, so the carbon footprint is very low. It's more cost effective and also environmental friendly. Uh, here's the mothership and with uh, five USVs. They can carry the survey walks at the same time. Walking conditions on the sea, especially offshore, is very tough. So it's not so friendly for the persons on the boat. And also the draft of the USV is very little. For some shallow waters, you can use USV instead of some big unmanned boat, a big manned boat. And the USVs can walk during the daytime or also the nighttime, so it's a, it's a, it's just a more efficient than, than people to do that. Okay. Uh, also, some customers sometimes ask where we can carry out the ROV. So this is a case. Uh, one of our boats can carry out the ROV. For the future, for traditional, you can have to unman uh, man boat to carry the ROV and also for some tires inside. Oh, no. Yeah, 
as we have the last last is an automatic launching system of the ROV. It was developed by ourselves. This is the central control room in our headquarters. So the scan is on a big area. When you find a suspected objective, you will launch the ROV downside down to the objective. Nowadays, some ROVs also have the mechanical arms, so it can operate uh, beneath the water. So you need, you don't need to uh, send the diver in, into the water, so it can fully operate on man. Yes, the whole process you can see there's no persons on the bird, but on the, on the boat, but it, it can achieve the functions same as the uh, man boat. Uh, this is a big project, as I mentioned. This is a mothership with the uh, the vertical observ observation system. It's uh, uh, combined the UAV, USV, and the USV, AU, AUV. So all the USVs on the board are supplied by us. So there's some concept you can have an overlook. overlook. <laughs> So this is a major for the uh, scientific research on the South China Sea, as many focus on the typhoon. And uh, you can have different kinds of uh, unmanned equipment to modify. So 
all the different uh, uh, unmanned facilities can communicate each other. So you have to communicate each other and uh, actually act together to achieve the certain functions. For the Typhoon eyes, we are, for humans, we have limited understanding of the Typhoon. So it's a scientific research is to study the Typhoon eyes to see what is, what is inside the Typhoon eye. So use the USV, which can be dived as well. Uh, the maximum is can be achieved the 60 uh, meters depth. So when the Typhoon comes, he, 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 he will hidden. And when the Typhoon eyes come, he will uh, rise and set some mechanisms to observe the typhoon eyes. The mothership now is in too high, so if someone have interest, in, we can arrange the visit if you want. Yeah, actually it's a big project. Uh, there's also some uh, little robotics I want to introduce to you guys. It's very small, but it's very, I think it's very important because it's, for, it's responsible for life rescue. Sorry. Anna, can you turn it on? This is what we call dolphin. Uh, dolphin series. It's um, rescue boyons, uh, which is driven by electricity. And uh, when something someone joins, you can use it to quickly arrive at the joiners. So, so it is much better than the the, the security person to swim there. It's very useful for the beach for the uh, security there. The maximum speed we can achieve now is about uh, 7 meters per second. For the Olympic champions, the maximum speed swimming speed is about over 2, minute, two, minutes, uh, two meters per second. So it is about, uh, about three, three, 3 times higher than the, than the champion. Last year in China, we used this equipment, uh, we saved about 13 persons. So I think it's very valuable. <laughs> yeah. So no matter for the Hubble, for the uh, oil and gas platform, for the uh, beach, so it's, uh, I think it's very useful to use this small robotics. And uh, we have Dolphin 3, now can carry three persons. Save a life without risking a life. Sometimes when someone wants to get rescued, they lost their, their life. So it's very pity. We hope that this product can save more persons in the future. Okay. So another application is the patron escorting. Uh, maybe a short video. Yeah, this is a product of our Singapore company. It's a 17 meters uh, a boat. It's very has a very good in the in the industrial design, and uh, the speed is about 40 knots. So it can do the petrol works and also as the ASCO works. It has a long endurance. We tested 22 days on the sea. It, it runs about 4,000 kilometers on the sea. Yeah. Yeah, so 
different uh, application areas. You can see we also have the firefighting boat, as I mentioned. Uh, this is on the design, uh, no, no, on the fabrication now, and it will deploy by the end of June or beginning of July. So this, uh, this is, the, the size is not so big, it's about 11 meters. So it is very suitable for the uh, firefighting in the marina. Yeah, so uh, because for the large fire boat, it sometimes the response time is very slow and also the, due to the big size, it cannot enter into the marina. So if there's a fire boat, a man fire boat, stand by, and you, you can use the AI cameras to detect the overall marina. When there's a fire, then automatically set the fire boat to the target uh, fire position, so you can uh, quickly, immediately doing the firefighting works. So, if you have interest, we may have some uh, videos in the coming two months. Yeah, this is the UI uh, uh, display. Uh, when you in, when you are in the remote control room, you can the operators, the firemen can monitor the uh, 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 the situations. Something uh, also regarding the environmental, uh, about the education or environmental friendly. So we, our products also be used the, such as in the UK, that they used to, uh, to, to, to scan and find the curves of the uh, uh, beavers. Uh, so it's very interesting. So no matter for the industrial, but also for the uh, environmental uh, production. So you can have a BBC video to have a brief and idea. And uh, being able to understand where and um, how big these sparrows are, these characters are, these lodges, relating to um, provide further information for nature stock. Until a bit of a burrow collapses, you can't actually uh, work out where it is. The burrow entrance is always underwater, obviously, into the hole of the beavers from the mm -hmm. um, So it's always here. It's got a multi-beam system on board and uh, also a high-level navigation system. Um, so it's been positioned using satellites. It's taking speed of sound measurements through water. The, the job is to find the curves of the, uh, of the beavers, so it will not cause the damages, uh, sorry, the dangerous to the people surrounding the river. So, very interesting uh, you to use the USV to do such kind of works. It's very, I mean, benefit for the, it's not a high cost, but it's very benefit for the people surrounding. This is uh, Zhuhai City. Because USV is very small and the uh, noise is very small as well, so you can use the uh, USV to get closer to the white dolphins, and also you can use the echo sounders to find the white, white dolphins and uh, to estimate the quantity of the dolphins. Also use USVs to monitor some of the mummy animals because a lot of wind farms are on the construction there, so they are very high paid a lot of attention on the production of those mummies. Technologies are also playing important role in guarding the natural reserve. 
the natural reserve protection has become more intelligent and efficient with advanced USB technology line. The only way to secure a future for the Chinese white dolphins is for us to work together. We are taking action to preserve the dolphins and marine biodiversity with USB technology support. Actually, we are very happy to such kind of works because it is going to protect the environmental and uh, to yes to save the uh, I mean the, the, the animals. Uh, uh, so a lot of videos. I just want to you have a brief understanding of USB's applications because different kinds of USBs from the small to the big, uh, different types, uh, so have different uh, uh, functions. So hope you enjoy the video. Um, but there's still some challenges about the USB. Uh, I think uh, the, the major one is the regulations because um, actually I think technology side is not a big issue, um, but uh, regulation is uh, a very very big uh, issue because in different countries now as a world in the world there's no common uh, regulations which can um, I mean to define for the US fees uh, a lot of people a lot of parties want to US, US, use USV but uh, you, they are fr afraid of regulations uh, so I think this is the key issue but uh, fortunately we are working with some classifications such as the CCS such as the marine department, maybe we are working on that to uh, maybe, I mean, to adequate the, the, the market and as, as well as to establish the fundamental regulations to uh, better uh, regulate and use the US fees uh, in, 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 in case of in the confliction with the, uh, I mean, the manned boats. So uh, it still have a long way to go, especially for the uh, global logistic cargo ships. Uh, but for the particular areas, I think that such as the oil and gas platform, such as the um, uh, uh, offshore wind farm for some certain areas, it's not no, so many uh, uh, boats ship, or ships. It is well more easy to apply the USV to do such kind of uh, 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 works. Yeah, so regulation is a big uh, trouble, I think. Another is the person, training, training the person, because uh, now you require is not the, the crews, you, you are required a, a person, a technical guy, he can use the USV, because it's not uh, so easy to use the USV. Um, it has some technical requirements, so the, 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 the mindset, the knowledge, uh, basement is different, so uh, we have to do more training works for the people to use the USV. Another is uh, reliability, uh, so USV is a platform, so it need uh, more, there's no person on the boat, so you don't know the, the actual conditions, so you, the product you have to be more reliable, um, you only can monitor off sh uh, on the shore, so the product itself can it should be more reliable. Uh, if not, where it's lost on the sea, so you, you even cannot find it back. So reliability is also very important, and also the um, cap cap capability. You know, uh, but this is uh, going uh, well and well because the uh, we have more different kind of designs to uh, adapt for different kinds of payloads, such as the ROV, AOV, UAV. So total systems or so different payloads, we the USB function is more and more, um, uh, uh, yeah. So the endurance, the data acquisition, so the capacity, yeah, uh, have to be improved. So this is some challenges for USB to develop. Um, but we think this is a big trend to trans tra transform from the uh, traditional man boat to a man 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 boat. Oh, okay. Last section, <laughs> we can talk something about what we can do in Qatar. Uh, actually, this is my first time to be here, and uh, it's very, very impressive because it's uh, in my mindset is a desert country, but nowadays it's a very modern city, a modern country, uh, so very beautiful, and the people here are very nice. Um, actually, this country has a good relationship with China and, and Hong Kong. And also the country has uh, abundant of uh, oil and gas resources, especially the LNG. Uh, so uh, also a lot of people like to be here for tourism. Uh, so I think um, and also I visited uh, several universities uh, yesterday and this morning. So 
I, f I found the the people here are very put a lot of resources on the education. There's a lot of, uh, I mean, uh, good universities here. So, so we found it's a very nice place, especially QSTP. It's a nice place. We can, uh, I mean, we can further collaborate to do more, uh, especially for the um, uh, apply of USV technologies uh, in such kind of, in, in, sorry, in this region, in this area and also that region, uh, especially such as, uh, as I mentioned, the marine survey, because we have Gulf Sea, there's a lot of survey works there for the oil gas industry of, of wind farm. Yeah, so we have to do some uh, uh, inspection works for the submarine cables, oil and gas pipes. Yeah, it's very boring actually to do such kind of uh, inspection works and also petrol surveillance, and uh, we can do transportation works, and also emergency rescue. Uh, and also for tourism, I went to the Banana Island. It's a very, very nice place, so we can consider some innovation, uh, some innovation products, so it is, will uh, bring more uh, memorable uh, uh, functions for, for, the, for the guests. So, uh, I think a lot, lot of places, a lot of uh, scenarios can use USB technologies to do some innovation, yeah. So we would like to establish an ID center in, in QSTP. It is now on the planning and uh, on the discussion. Um, what we will do, I think the uh, most of them is R&D, so uh, in fact the technology is not uh, is in the progress. It's, uh, you know, the autonomous level is from level zero to level six. And now we are maybe on the level four to level, around level four. So it's, it's still a high way to go, a, low way to, a long way to go. So um, R&D, we have to do uh, continuous to the R&D research. And especially for this region, I think it's a, a very hot region. So how to improve the technologies, how to improve the products uh, under such kind of uh, hot, uh, uh, weather conditions. Uh, it's also have some lot of works to do. So I think the IND center here will be very uh, valuable. And also for the, um, uh, I think Qatar is very, very, they are very, pay, I mean, very focused on the high value products or uh, they are put, uh, put a lot of uh, resources on the design, so we also want, want to cooperate to see whether we can have something designed in Qatar. I mean, for such, a, for such, as, such as the industrial design, maybe the, 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 the uh, equipment is the same, but the design is different. So that will uh, reflect the, the Qatar, uh, I mean, the design <laughs> is very, I think it's also an approach to, to, to work together. Um, another is the we can tackle different uh, kinds of uh, problems from the local customers. Uh, we can work together because uh, when I meet some persons, different parties, they also have different concerns or different technical requirements. So how to tackle such a kind of uh, uh, problems that we can do more here. And we have some partners. I visited uh, some partners. Uh, I mean, uh, yesterday here, uh, which we can have some future. We can have some uh, cooperation. So, so yes, we, I think they are very friendly. So, uh, we can do more here. Uh, also, we can do more about education works because uh, our software is or our. The USB platform is, um, I think, is uh, can be further developed. I, I, I just say it's a it's a fundamental platform. You can base on the, front, the platform. You can do the further study. You can do the further, I mean, uh, different application areas. You can with different payloads. So, for the students, for the uh, institutions, guys, we can work together to explore more uh, functions of the USBs, especially which is particularly required in the in Qatar, in Doha, which is what is the particular pain points for people here to do some works, which is can be replaced by the, the US fees. So that's what we want to do. For example, the, if, I, I don't know, this is, I heard it's very famous, there's the word shark in this area. Anything we can do is US fee to monitor or tracking or something else. <laughs> yes, so I think, uh, nice, please. So we, yeah, uh, hope today's uh, 
uh, uh, uh, a brief to uh, gentlemen and ladies, and hope you can understand the what we are doing and <laughs> understand more about the USB technologies and applications. And we still have a long way to go. So I think Qatar is a a good place to uh, work together to go further. Yeah, that's my presentation. So we want to create create value, and uh, this is our vision. We want to promote the world into the world intelligence era. So uh, a lot of companies doing the vehicles on a lot uh, airplanes only, UAV, UAVs only, air. But we are doing the service vessels. So we want to put the water put the water intelligence forward. So yeah, that's what we want to do here. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, this is my presentation. Thanks. <laughs> um, you want to say something? Yeah, yeah <laughs> thank you. Um, so, th thank you. Uh, so, this is our third uh, AI lecture series. Uh, but obviously, uh, all the invited, uh, invited um, uh, presenter, uh, this is what you see is accumulation of 15 years of experience. So, I know it's a little bit longer than usual, but um, the uniqueness of this company is that almost everything is tailor made. So it's actually it's very, very difficult, um, but they tailor for different applications. So I know that there are a lot of you here, um, you may want to talk to Pine. Uh, let me highlight a few things that you may want to talk to him. Um, if, I know that there are some of you actually have connections with the whale shark, you should talk to him. If you have connections with the environmental folks, you should talk to him. If you are interested in the um, mapping, I know Cubic is here, you know, the mapping, we used to do it just above uh, sea level, but it's possible to do under sea level. I think it's extremely interesting. Uh, if you're interested in tourism, you should talk to me. I, haven't, I don't think that I've shown you the, uh, the fireworks with the water drones, right? You haven't. So there are, there are a lot of things that you can talk to him. Um, but again, I want to thank Pine for coming and Anna all the way from, uh, from Asia.